What's going on, everybody? Mayor Palmer 73 here. Let me turn my volume down so I don't go to blaming myself. Plus, the birds is making enough noise. Let's see. Good morning to everybody. Guava, guava, guava. Put a little too much cream in my coffee this morning. Let me see here. Let me find where I'm at, okay? Boy, this thing be tripping. Good God, that thing be tripping. There we go. There I am. There I am. What's going on, everybody? Live Farmer 73 here. Good morning to everybody here. And uh, for those that's going to catch this later, hello. Hello. Now, I made a promise, and I got caught up in a bunch of other life stuff but i made a promise and i said i was going to do it it's not a challenge I'm getting sick of that word I, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you um how you doing aretha it's not a challenge it's just to just do it you know i'm getting sick of challenge why do we have to be challenged to do something that we supposed to be doing in the first place? That, that's, that's the first thing out of my head. Why you gotta, why it gotta be a competition? Why it gotta be, once it starts, to, once the word challenge come out, then the word competition come out, and then the hatred and the backbite, even when it's just for fun, it's, fun just goes too far these days. People just take things the wrong way. That's why I just, just kind of stay away from it. Anyway. This is just a just do it. Just do it. It's not a competition at all. It's not a challenge. It's not a double dog dare. It's just, man, just. It's it's not even a do it because that's that's out of my lane. It's a try this. There you go. Everybody doing the challenges. I'm a I'm a I'm a switch the word from challenge to hey, try this. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Tiana Scott, Love Lace. I can see this far away. Uh, Patience Saint, more Backyard Gardeners, Love Lace. Uh, Tammy, Dolores, Shaquila, Trina's Journey. How you doing, my sister? Bless too. Dale Gata, JJ, uh, Maslins, Ant for a Barbecue. What's going on, everybody? Let's get right into it. Now, um, I think it was the last live stream I did. Uh, how you doing, Rita Johnson? Said, just finished looking at one of your videos. Second time catching your videos. Well, welcome. Guava. Welcome to the Greenhouse Lounge. Um, I got a lot of work to do today. We're going to be talking about some power later on. So, just so you guys know. We're going to be talking about power. And we're going to be talking about fuel. I'm back in the saddle. So, everybody buckle up. It's time to get ready and, and do what I, I like doing. Anyway, um, my friend Crafty Leo, who was that that just came in? Creative Beauties. How you doing, Creative Beauties? Crafty Leo came into my live stream the other day, and I asked her to, to plant a plant. Plant a starter. So I started making a video, and I said, before I finish this video, I'm going to just go live with, hey, pa uh, Patio Frutal. How you doing? I'm just going to release the video anyway, but I'm I'm going live today. How many people, um, thank you, Gene. How many people don't have a clue about gardening? Just just nothing and you scared and you don't want to be embarrassed. Hey, crafty mom, how you doing, sister? How many people just, you're overwhelmed. You never planted anything. All right, Travis say, planting the tomato. We doing it today, okay? Tarsha, Tarsha. Hey, Tarsha, how you doing? Me, I got you, Tarsha. Uh, stylish, how you doing? Let me, let me put these on. Okay, GG me, okay. Soil sister, how you doing, my sister? Miss me in Savannah? Yeah, I couldn't make it this year. Uh, crafty creations. I haven't been well enough to maintain a garden. I hope you feel better. Vine Will. Good morning, Led. Everybody. Okay. 
Sunday backyard farmer, man. I see you tearing. I see you in the backyard tearing it up. Let me tell you something. Sunday backyard farmer, I wish I was on StreamYard right now because, boy, I will bring you up. I know you at work, but I would ask you for two seconds. Pretend you're going to the bathroom. Wait a minute. It's your own job. You ain't got to pretend you're going to the bathroom. You can go to your own bathroom. But look, because I've been seeing you, boy, you, you literally... One night, I was watching you during the premiere. Bruh, you had me ready to go outside at night and get myself together, my brother. Uh, Lonnie, Lori Lewis said, first year starting all my saved seeds. Okay. This is Save Your Seeds 73. Okay. When you eat that watermelon, you take them seeds out. If they still have any watermelons these days with seeds in them, I'm going, I'm going to dip around Conspiracy Theory Alley and I'm coming right back. Ain't no doggone watermelons got no seeds in them no more. They're even coming out with seedless tomatoes. Have y'all seen this stuff? Say so this, uh... Kendria says, this is our third year, and it's the best thing that has ever happened for our family. Amen. Uh, Karen Lee said, yes. Or the seeds are immature, right? The seeds are like white. That, yeah, immature seeds in your fruit. No seeds in your fruit. Uh, it's weird. Apples with no seeds in them. Oranges with no seeds in them. Citrus with no seeds in them. Um, I'm going to tell y'all this. Uh, let me see. Uh, solo soldier said, I went to the farmer's market just for a watermelon with seeds. And it was what I did too last year. I went to a, I went to a, uh, to the farmer's market here to get just a watermelon with seeds. It had labels on them. It was the same labels from the big box store. Right? Now here's another. So the farmer's market really in my area, they ain't legit no more. They crooked and they selling watermelons and stuff for the same prices you can get them at the store. And I got to drive forever to go to my farmer's market. So if I got to drive that far just to get the same thing I can go around the corner and get, it, it, it's ridiculous. What's up, uh, Raw Talk? How you doing? Uh, Steve, how you doing? Cool. Uh, so here's the thing. If you find any, any seeds and any fruit, you... I know if you plant some fruits, it it may not come out true to its parent. Did, did I see somebody say, hey, Tian, how you doing, my sister, if you in here? Hey, Chan Robinson, how you doing? Hey, my Renaissance grandma. Educated natural. There you go. There you go. How you doing, sister? Save your seeds. I don't care where they come from. It may not come back true to its parent fruit. But we, it's getting a little weird. We all boycotting all kind of stuff. And I get it. Everybody keep boycotting this, boycotting that, boycotting this, boycotting that. But you know what we should be really truly boycotting? Stop trying to take away our freedom. And, and when I say that, I mean, stop trying to make us eat food with no seeds in it so we can't choose if we want to plant it or not. When, this is how I look at this. When I buy a tomato, or I buy a potato, or I buy a watermelon, the reason why these prices is so high, you already got me by the grapes, squeezing them down into wine. I get that. But one of the reasons why I'm even ex kind of accepting your price hikes is I'm like this. A watermelon going to cost me about $5. I'm going to show them, I'm going to get the seeds out of it, and I'm going to plant a 1,000 watermelons. So that kind of eases the pain a little bit of pulling them seeds out of that watermelon. You eases the tension. Now you're making me pay $7 for a watermelon. It ain't no seeds in it. It don't even make no sense. So I got tons of seeds. I, I can't even bring them out. We have tons of seeds from all the stuff we've been eating over the years and all the fruit that we've tasted from mangoes to peaches to plums. We just hang on to that stuff. Even exotic fruits like soursop and uh, um, what's that other one? Uh, sugar apples and dragon fruit. I can't make this up. Save your seeds. 
When I say this, save our seeds, I mean it. You better hold on. Take that apple. After you done eating that apple, if you get a seed, a mature seed, spit that thing in a napkin, put it in your pocket. And, and when you get home, leave it in that napkin and put it in a, a paper bag. So, how do you store seeds and will they sprout? Um, <clears throat> I, In my last video, I showed that. If you can go to my last live stream where I'm out here on the porch just like this. Okay. So, this is what we're doing today. For, this is just simple. I'm not going to, I don't really want to be on this. What is a mature seed? I'm going to have you Google that, okay? Uh, let me see. You're welcome, Tarsha. What's up, M.I. Prepper? How you doing, say? Those seedless fruit and vegetables might be making men walk around seedless. We're going to come back from Conspiracy Theory Alley because I think I forgot to close the door. But you got something there, yeah. Say, I love gardening. Gene says, I love gardening. Haven't started yet, but I will save the seed. Today, I'm going to make sure that, uh, no, no, no. Am I a prepper? No, brother, I'm congratulating you. That was a good one. Don't apologize for that because that sounds like some crazy stuff I'm about to start saying. I just don't want to get into that. But I, I'm with you. Okay, so we're going to start here. If you have never planted anything because you are scared, I'm going to tell you what to do. No, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you how I do it. That's it. It's, it's super simple. And I'm going to show you something else. If you, if you purchase... Let me find something. Okay, here, here we go. Look, here you go, right here. It goes some persimmon seeds. Told you. Saving everything. Up. Oh, ooh. Miracle berry seeds. Miracle berry seeds. I might have to I might have to sell a few of them. If anybody is interested in some miracle berry seeds, uh, let me see how many I got. I don't have many. But if you don't know anything about a miracle fruit, let me can I. Let's get into this real quick. Miracle fruit. Miracle fruit, and then we're going to get into what I'm doing. Over this way. This is just the cup. I did not buy this. I planted these seeds. This is a miracle berry fruit. This makes sour things taste sweet. Now, I learned this. No, no. I learned it years ago and never thought twice about it. I learned all about this plant and I thought they only could deal in like Africa and stuff like that, right? So I always walk past them. I'll never forget a time I was in Florida on vacation and they had tons of them on the clearance rack down to five and three dollars and they was huge, right? They don't get very big, but I think these was as big as they can get, five dollars. And I, my son was with me and I said, you know what? Nah. It's just going, we're just going to take it home and it's going to die. What a fool. So fast forward a few years. Black's Tropical Homestead. Uh, they had a miracle fruit. I, I went and checked them out and they had a miracle berry fruit plant out in front of their house. They had a bunch of them. And they wanted me and Lady Led to taste them. Me and Lady Led went out there. They said, first eat this lemon. Sherry said, first Led, you got to taste this lemon. <laughs> And no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I said it backwards. First, put the fruit, let it go around your tongue, and then take the fruit seed out. The, the fruit is delicious too, but then now I taste this lemon. Lemonade all day long. So my mouth tasted, if I ate anything sour for that next hour or two, it started wearing off about an hour and a half, two hours sweet so anything you eat sour like pickles tastes like sweet gherkins you could take a dill pickle a sour pickle and it tastes like a sweet gherkin we tried it and i just couldn't believe it so that's what this plant does it helps diabetics and everybody else
taste sweetness when you can't really have no sugar. So this one little fruit. So I kept all the seeds from, I bought some plants and one, well, do I got the other one out here? No, both of them are in the house right now. And they fruited like crazy last year. Both of them fruited like crazy. So I started planting the seeds. I sent uh, um, J3GS Farms, I sent him some seeds. I hope they work out because this is what they doing. And I've had them in a little, a little bitty cell, like a, you start seed start, but keep your seeds. Oh, and by the way, go look at how much a miracle berry plant costs. Jeez. If you see how much they cost, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm saving the seeds. I think I paid about $50, $60 per, per plant, I think. I know it was I know it was high. I know it that that day instead of taking my wife to a fancy restaurant on our vacation, we went to like McDonald's or something. Okay. So, anyway, that's why I say save your seeds. Here go, this is all I got too of them. This is all I got. I only got about it looked like I got about 20 and I got some sugar apples. Yeah. Some sugar apples right here and then down here i got some miracle berry fruits in another bag so i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to put them online and see what i can do because uh that's a special that's a special tree now back to action this goes out to uh crafty leo please go over to crafty leo channel and check her out she is phenomenal she is the bomb with what she do So if you're interested in a miracle berry plant, I can even tell you, you can go online. Don't buy the seed online. Let me stop. Let me stop. If you buy the miracle berry seed online before you hit purchase on Amazon or anything else, look at the reviews. Don't nobody seeds ever sprout like they selling them trash. I'm just telling you because I was about to buy some. Then my tree started fruiting. Don't buy them seeds online. Don't do it. I'm not, I ain't going to tell you what to do. Look at the reviews. The reviews. Uh, let me see. The reviews on the Miracle Berry Fruit. Whether you go to eBay. Etsy. Uh, Amazon horrible reviews so if you're gonna go don't buy the seed itself from these weird people online that you ain't sure of it's and they all coming from some other countries i'm just saying <clears throat> just look at the reviews and you will see when your reviews are more negative than positive i'm talking about i'm not talking about some you know a hundred people out of five thousand people didn't like it. I'm talking about some five thousand people. <laughs> okay, everywhere I went, there was nobody was happy. Everybody was like, never sprouted, never sprouted, never sprouted. Got them and they was molded, never sprouted. So I'm just telling you, so you will know. Okay. Just go and buy the plant itself. The whole plant or buy them from a per buy the seeds from a person that you know has the miracle berry plant you've seen it you've watched them eat it um you can go to blacks tropical homestead you can go to me if you're gonna buy some go to somebody you see where it's actually working i got three of them right here and i got three of them in the house these are from my seeds off of my tree um So, <clears throat> here you go. Wow, I caught that. Here you go. If you have never planted anything, I picked up a Mr. Stripey tomato. Random, random. You're going to see the video. I picked up a, um, a Mr. Stripey tomato, okay? Now, here's the part about this. This is why I don't do this. 
this tomato costs five dollars for one tomato plant for one all right is anybody familiar with purchasing starts like this it fell over last night that's why i was like this so it's fine just need a little <laughs> need a little viagra um right uh taz the prices are out of control they don't sell six sales anymore you know where they sell the little six pack i got them too i got it somewhere they don't sell them no more so this one plant is five dollars now i can show you how to turn this five dollars and make your money back every time one of these nodes come off one of these Every time one of these branches come off when they get mature, when they get mature enough, take it off and plant it. It will turn into an identical plant of what you already have. Okay? So, you will get your money's worth, but it's some work involved. It ain't hard at all, but it's some work, nevertheless. Um, okay. This, we're not talking about testing soil. We're only talking about planting a starter plant. If you need to know all of that stuff, my friend, you may want to Google all of those questions. They look like some serious questions. And frankly, half of the things that you listed, I don't do. I just don't do. I don't get into, I don't live in an area, I don't live in a place where I need to test everything in the soil every five seconds this is how this is how i test my soil just so you know i know i fed it i know i watered it when i see worms in my soil and my soil at my bucket ain't even on the ground if my buckets are out on the ground and i still see worms inside my bucket my soil is fine. I don't use meters and testers and gadgets. And I, when I'm done with this, I'm going to take you on a quick tour and let you let you see exactly what I'm talking about. OK. My plants and trees and fruit grows way slower than everybody else's. And I'm fine with that. But I don't get into all the chemicals and the gadgets and the, all of that nonsense is nonsense. And it rips your pocket off. I just don't do it. If you take care of your soil, it will feed your plant. And I I don't have to test it. If I know, you know what? People see mold in their soil and they think it's a bad thing. Mold in your soil is actually a good thing. That means your, your soil is so healthy that bacteria, hey, miscellany Michelle, when you, when you start getting mold in your soil, hey, so good, Gardner. When you start getting mold in your soil, um, fungus, fungus, that's what I meant to say. When you start seeing fungus and it look gross like something threw up on it or something, and mushrooms, that means your doggone soil is so healthy that it can sustain life. That's what that means. That don't mean your soil is going bad. That ain't like you you got old sour pair of drawers hanging from the curtain rod. Um that's yes mushrooms are a good sign that means all of that stuff is breaking down and nothing can grow if the soil is bad okay so let's get back into this all right this is the mr stripey tomato and i'm gonna make this as simple and as possible all right because people we watch people on YouTube and they do all of this stuff. And it's like, I promise you, you don't have to do all it. Nine times out of 10, I ain't gonna say that. Nine times out of 10, you do not have to do all of that garbage. You just don't. You just don't. If you keep saying, when is my fruit coming? When is my fruit coming? You might wanna stop gardening. I said it, and ain't nobody going to like it. If you a person that's like, God, when is the fruit? When is the fruit? When is the fruit? Just go find something else to do. Because you're doing this for the wrong reasons. 
if you don't have any patience whatsoever, this is not going to work for you. I'm, I'm telling you, and I mean it. Okay. If you can't just plant your, it's like waiting for your child to grow up and move out of the house, go to college, get a good job, marry a, a nice woman, have some beautiful, smart, healthy children. You can't keep saying, God, when you grown? When you gonna be grown? When you gonna go get a job? When You, you can't tell no six month old that stuff. You gotta chill, take care of the kid. If you want the kid to grow up and you want the kid to actually produce in society and be a good citizen and a good human being and a good man, you gotta do your part by starting the foundation, taking care of that child. Sometimes that go left, I get it, but for the most part, take care of that child, nurture that child, nurture the child's surroundings, and the child may end up being pretty decent, okay? These, growing these plants is about the doggone same. Take it easy. Nurture the child, nurture the plant, nurture its surrounding, nurture and feed the soil. It ain't too much different. If you can grow a plant, you, I was about to say, you can have some kids, but I, I had to stop, I had to stop that. So here we go. First off, I'm just gonna show you a simple way. Here's, here's the mission, the mission for the day. We are going to get one five gallon bucket. Go get one five gallon bucket. I promise I've done this video a billion times over the years. One five gallon bucket. Drill or cut a hole in the bottom or the side. It don't matter. I'm gonna show you something I like to do as well, if I can find one. I like to drill a hole in the bottom sometime. And I found this to be a little bit more slicker than that. And sometimes I like to drill a hole in the side. I'm gonna tell you why I do this. I drill holes in the side because you see that little space down there, it's about an inch, inch and a half from the bottom. That's full of dirt, by the way. What that does is when, when you water it, it actually holds about an inch of water at that very bottom. Just that inch and a half of water, it's a pool down there. And what that pool does is it retains that water. So those roots, when they start drying out at the top, those roots can actually reach down. And you being a little bit neglectful, okay? Those roots can reach down in that last little reservoir. That's, that's your reserve tank of water. And they will sop that last little bit of water up just, just in case you ain't on top of your game. That's why I do that. I used to just put them all at the bottom like this. <clears throat> But I start seeing better results by just cutting or drilling a hole or two on the sides instead up about an inch like this right around here. So when, when you start watering the bucket, when you start watering the bucket, it all just don't run straight out. It holds about an inch and a half to two inches worth of water for the plant itself. Now, if you overwater, that could be a bad thing. Just you, you be all right. You'll see. Now, let's start. You got your five-gallon bucket. You drilled your hole in the bottom or you drilled your hole in the side. Let's try the side. It's easier to cut this with a razor blade. Let Everybody ain't got power tools anyway. Uh, put a hole in the side. It ain't got to be a pretty circle. It can be, it can be anything. Just cut a hole in the side. Come up about an inch or two. And cut that hole in the side of the bucket. Now, huh, I forgot it. Go, go and uh, let me see if I can't find one right off the bat here. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Whatever, wherever you got that hole at, I got seeds in here marinating. Wherever you have that hole, hold on. 
I'm doing too much. That's good, Natasha. I'm, I'm making it simple, sister. Okay. Damn. Okay, napkin. Don't use a bounty paper towel. Don't. Get a cheap, cheap, cheap. The whole roll of paper towels cost you 99 cents. Or go get some, some toilet paper. And put over that hole. Like that. If you use a bounty paper towel, what's going to happen is that bounty paper towel is so good, it becomes like a, it locks up. The fibers in the bounty paper towel locks up, and those things really do work that good, where it will never let water out. I've had this happen before. Don't use a bounty paper towel. Use a, there you go, that's a good one. She, she is sunshine. A coffee filter. But even them will clog up. You want something that's going to degrade. Go get and fast. Get some toilet tissue. Toilet tissue. Okay. And roll it over like you're about to wipe it up. Okay. So put your tissue at the bottom or put it over your hole. Go to the store and just get something. Don't put cardboard. That just cardboard, it don't degrade long enough and it's too thick. What we doing these, how can I put it? What, we, what we're doing is like, we're trying to almost, it's like putting a sugar cube in your mouth. You want this to melt fairly quick. You understand what I'm saying? Like an M&M. Got some dirt on my lip. Like an M&M. You want this to melt fairly quickly in, in, a, in a week or so. You don't want this to be holding on to no water at all. Okay, you're going to mess up. Go to the store. We got our five-gallon bucket. We put a hole in it. I wish I could get one with a hole on the side so I could stop doing this. Go to the store and get a bag of potting soil. I don't care what brand. I'm not going to make this difficult for you because I can go a billion different directions with this. Go to the store and just, I don't care if it's a dollar store. I don't care if it's a big box store. Potting soil. First thing y'all gonna ask me is, should I get the moisture controlled or should I get the... I prefer no. Me, I have never, I don't like buying moisture control anything because you don't know how controlling it is and something you plant in there may not need to be that moist all the time. Tomatoes don't need to be watered that hard like that and stay in no soggy soil. Just plain old, go get some cheap basic uh just some soil okay potting soil before you put it in your bucket or uh get two buckets put it in there and look and see what's in there because i actually bought some potting soil one year that was full of termites it was full of termites okay and it, i've gotten it from cheap brands and i've gotten it from expensive brands so don't, i don't want to hear oh that's because it's the cheap no i've got termites in very expensive i'm not gonna name that company brand that everybody know that they say they do miracles to help you grow you understand what i'm saying so i've gotten termites in in several bags of cheap soil and expensive soil name brand soil bucket potting soil I'm a pretend. I'm a pretend that this is. I just purchased this pot and soil. I didn't purchase this. This is the this is the compost that used to be under my chicken coop. My chicken coop was out there. So I'm going to pretend. Hey, let's pretend to pretend. Here's my bucket that I'm going to fill up. Here's my potting soil here that I just purchased. So what I'm going to do first, now I'm going to show you what I do. I'm not going to show you that this is the only way because it's not. I'm going to show you what I do. Now, here, here. 
are some, oh, while people is playing, look, look at this, while people playing games, what I tell you, this is why I don't test my soil. Where is it, where is it? This is why I don't test my soil. I, I let God test it for me. If you feed your soil, you take care of your soil, you build the compost, you build the soil, this is what you get. You see that worm? That's telling me I got some healthy soil in these buckets. Okay. So, this is a trellis. This is a four-foot trellis that I made. I cut a, um, a cattle panel, and you can see them in the back here. I'm going to show you that closer. I cut a cattle panel, and I made a trellis. I don't want my tomato plants to be six and eight feet tall. I only want to keep them so tall. Four feet is fine for me, and then I'm going to start cutting them off and replanting them other places. I don't want a super tall tomato plant. I'd rather it be bushy and controllable than just all over the place. I've done that for years, and it just never works out. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this trellis. You can go buy a tomato trellis. A tomato trellis costs about two or two bucks. Okay? Just go get a trellis or get something that's going to stake that tomato up. Now, this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick this down in here. Let me get my shovel. Let me make sure y'all can see that. I'm going to cover that hole at the bottom. Now I'm going to take my potting soil and I'm going to fill this thing up. Remember, this is pretend. This ain't real potting soil. Look at that. No need to test your soil if you, do your, if you take care of your soil. So let's speed this up. We still pretending. Oh, this is my pot of soil. I'm just dumping the bag in here and stuff. Look at all them juicy worms. Now you see that? Okay. Here we got whole pot of potting soil, a whole bucket of potting soil in my trellis. This trellis ain't going nowhere. Okay? In the winds and everything, you will see as the, as the soil settle in this bucket, this ain't going nowhere. So, I'm going to take my tomato plant that I purchased. I'm going to show you something, something dope. I'm going to dig a hole. I'm going to take this plant out like this. Simple. That's what it looked like down there. It should anyway. I'm going to dig this hole deeper. Watch this. Can y'all see that okay? Make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to plant this tomato plant all the way up to here. Because... All of these little nodes on the side of that tomato, if you can see them little hairs and nodes down here, especially down to the bottom, all of that's going to root and make your tomato plant stronger so it just don't limp over in the wind. These roots are going to reach down and roots going to come from all the way up here and it's going to actually make your plant grow even faster. Where you think it would kill this plant, these plants you can root almost any part of this. So I'm going to plant that super deep. Deeper than other plants. You can't do this with peppers. Now watch. Let me I want to I want to zoom in on that so y'all can really really see. Okay, see how deep that is? I'm about to cover these whole these two little limbs. I'm covering them up. I'm planting that all the way up to here. Just like that. 
Now with my tomato plant, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually do this just like I would be healing up some tomatoes. Once this starts growing up here, once this starts growing way up here, I'm gonna fill this up. I'm gonna leave about an inch from here, but I'm gonna fill this up with even more soil. Now, take the little tag that came with your plant, stick it in the side so you know what you're doing. Or you can make those tags like I showed you, the pop, pop can tags, and hang them from the handle so you know what plant you got. That's your best bet. Now, you water that in. Let me water it just for giggles. Water it in. I'm here with y'all. I'm just trying to show you everything. Now I'm going to move this out the way. That's full of soil. Find the spot where you're going to put your tomato and set it down. This going to settle and everything, this tomato is going to grow straight up this trellis. This tomato going to grow straight up this trellis and once it get about here, maybe here, I'm cutting it off. That is all. You are done. That's it. Now I'm gonna show you the result of two different things. I told you guys last time we did this that uh, I bought some starter tomatoes and I said I wasn't buying no more starter tomatoes because they cost too much. I'm gonna show you why I start growing everything from seed. Because each tomato plant, remember, each tomato plant costs $5. Each tomato plant costs $5. A pack of tomato seeds costs $1.99. In that pack of $1.99 seeds, you're going to get anywhere from 30 and up seeds or 30 and below seeds. At least around 15. Let me show you. Here's the results. Well, it's better if I do this. Okay. Here's the results of the plants that I purchased. These are the tomato plants that I've purchased. And you see they're blooming already and everything, growing up the trellis nicely. And I got tre the same trellises that I made for the one I just showed you. I made for these. Now, before you go spending your $5... Your $15, this is what you can do. Remember, y'all watch me plant these from seed. These are the seedlings that I planted. This is from seed. I told y'all, these are going to catch up to those. Those aren't too much bigger than this, the seedlings that I grew. Once that heat come out, these are going to catch up with those. And I'm, I'm paying attention and I'm keeping track of them. But you better believe the ones that I planted back there and here are going to catch up with these two up here. Mark my word. So that's why I say save your seed. Plant everything by seed. If you can't plant by seed and that's too difficult, please go by all means. And get a starter plant. Okay. Get a starter plant. And just get started. Now, while you plant that starter plant, go try to try some seeds. You know you got one growing. Okay. The company got you already started. So you ain't got no worries. Once you got that one plant that you purchased like this, start it. Hey, oh, that's a pepper, by the way. Once you got it started, 
go ahead and just go and plant some seeds and try that. Keep trying all year. Never stop. Just keep trying it. All right? It, it's going to work. Do one plant at a time. This is my goal. This is my goal. This is what I, I would like for you to try. Stop trying to look at YouTube and grow 50 different things. Stop it. You're, gonna, you're just going to discourage yourself. S just stop that. It's discouraging as hell. That was like me. Like me. I'm good at a lot of different things. I'm not certified. I'm only certified in a few things. I'm good at a lot of things. I'm so good at a lot of things that I get frustrated in what I want to do all the time. Instead of just focusing on one or two things, most of us are like that. So buy one tomato plant. If you don't know nothing about gardening, so you don't be discouraged, buy one tomato plant and do exactly what I said. Buy some potting soil, five gallon bucket, put a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. Fill the black bucket, I mean, fill up the potting, I mean, Fill up the five-gallon bucket with the potting soil. Put the tomato plant in the potting soil. Put a trellis up there if you want to. You don't necessarily have to. It can, your tomato can actually lean over and hit the ground. It ain't going to hurt nothing. I've grew it like that for years, too. Y'all can look, go back in my videos. One year, I didn't put no trellises nowhere. One year, I put trellises everywhere and forgot to... Pin the tomatoes up and let the tomatoes just sprawl all over the ground. Actually, one of the best tomato growing years I've ever had beside uh, in this house. Let them just run across the ground. Just take it easy and it's going to grow. Just everybody I'm watching in just not just in this garden community, but just trying to garden in general. Everybody is trying to grow squash, tomatoes, potatoes, beans, greens. Everybody is doing too much and every year at the end of the year everybody say my garden failed and I what I see from what what I'm seeing from everybody is not that you failed you were just doing too much you're trying to grow everything that you see OG gardeners and and people have been gardening their whole life you're trying to grow all of this stuff that and things that's cute Things that's trendy, things that you're not going to eat, things that you don't even care if it grow or not. You're trying to grow that stuff. And the next thing you know, it's dead by the end of the year. This is why I say, uh, I'm going to say this. Grow your, mm, no, that's another guy's, ooh, 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 that was another dude's uh, motto. I don't want to, I don't want to eat him up. There's a guy, I, I wish I knew his name. I was watching him for years. And he says a motto that I was about to say. He used to say, I'm going to, I'm going to give him credit because I, I can't think of his name, man. He used to say, grow your passion. Do y'all remember that guy? He's a gardener. I think he's like in California. And he used to say, grow your passion. Great guy. He disappeared for a long time, but he just came back. Remember him? You know what, Um, sweet caramel? Not even just grow what you eat. Grow something that, doggone that you're passionate about. You know, I love cucumbers. Pay, that's what I know I'm going to pay attention to. I love tomatoes. I know I'm going to pay attention to tomatoes because I want some. Stop trying to grow stuff that you don't really care about. You don't, you're not anticipating eating it. Because when you don't anticipate eating it, you don't care. Uh, Fresh and Fire said, I got two golden nugget loquat trees after seeing yours. Any advice on keeping them happy and healthy? Loquat trees will grow in concrete. There is really nothing you need to do to a low quad tree. I, you could, you know what? This is what I, I learned the hard way about low quad trees, and we're going to take a quick, quick tour to show that I'm, that I'm talking what I'm talking about. Over these years, I've done it, and I'm going to show you the results of it. Okay. Instead of me just running my mouth, 
me see. Um, don't just grow what you eat. Grow what you're passionate about. I love apples. I love pears. I love persimmons. That's why y'all always see them. Other stuff, I'll be like, mm, I don't know. Mm, you know, I love pomegranates, but I, I walk past them every day because I don't always got my mouth fixed for no pomegranate. Oranges, oh. Y'all see me down Lemon Lane. I always be paying attention to my oranges and my lemons. Love them. So, I'm going to take y'all on a tour. Do I have any questions at all? What I just showed you is it. That's how you start a tomato plant. And I'm going to show you again. This is this simple. And I got them all on my... This is my new grilling garden, because here go my, my patio garden side. I'm about to open up around the sides here, because I'm not planting back out there no more. And I got my grill set up here, because everything that I'm going to be growing here on my, my back porch, I'm going to be cooking it in the grilling station. That's my outdoor kitchen that I got. So this is... Uh, Led's grilling garden when you let me see When you grow what you don't really like it's easy to neglect exactly that's my point exactly set apart my point exactly Fresh and fire say I'm so in love with citrus the rewards are great. Yes, they are um, What kind of what do I grow uh, CJ what kind of what? What What's those trellises made from in the pots? I literally used my wire cutter, my bolt cutter, and made them out of cow panels. I can't make that up. My wife literally sat here with me while I was making them the other day. Just cutting up some old cow panels that I was going to throw out. How do you keep your oranges from freezing? I don't. I live, I live in a climate that... I don't have to worry about that too much. Every blue moon, it get a little weird, but for the most part, no. Natasha, any advice for growing a garden on a balcony or do you have videos? I have videos and I just showed you literally just now. We are on my back porch. We are on my back porch, the same as your patio. There is absolutely no different. I am growing in containers on my back porch. No different than your balcony. Okay, so everything you saw in this video today, you can do it in your, your apartment. You can even do it indoors if you have something to catch the water. If you don't have anything to catch the water, how many people, how many people don't have a balcony? How many people don't have a balcony? I'm going, I'm going to show you something. How many people do not have a balcony, but you want to grow some kind of food? You may have windows or you can go purchase a grow light, but you, do, you just live in an apartment, but you don't have a balcony. How many people raise your hand? What kind of tomatoes do I grow? All kinds. Uh, Karen Hill said, that's how a lot of folks think they feel at gardening. It's best to grow that uh what does well in your climate environment exactly exactly okay no balcony no balcony apartments apartments okay how long do it grow take to grow tomatoes plant a tomato and see okay trust me i, I don't i'm not being mean I, I want you to do it plant the plant and do the research for yourself. Because if I tell you six months and I live in the South and you live in the North, it's going to be totally different for you. Plant the plant and you will see. Okay? I'm not being mean. I just want you to put your hands in that soil so you can check it out yourself. Don't wait for the harvest. All everybody should be doing, everybody should be nurturing your soil. Stop worrying about the payday. Nurture your soil. Take care of your soil. If you take care of your soil, that's like the same as taking care of the environment that your child is growing up in. What school did you put your child in? What kind of education did you make sure your child had? What kind of life lessons did you teach your child? That is your soil. 
you are giving your child a better chance and a head start at real life in society with other people if you take care of his environment if you nurture his environment that is the same thing as a plant if you take care of the soil the soil is the plant or the tree's environment everything that it consumes all of the nurture the nutrients that it uptakes that's how much of a better tree it's going to be just like your child and you know the saying you know the saying um what is that saying um live hard die young live hard die young people these young kids live fast live fast rock and roll just you know they go hard they go hard all the time and then they end up looking like an old catcher's mitt in the face bodies be all broken down right and they they pass away quick look at all the rock stars and stuff they pass away quick because they lived so hard so fast that they also expired fast if you keep trying to make your plant grow that fast and you're trying to shove all these it's the equivalent of a person taking drugs when you keep putting all them chemical fertilizers and stuff on your trees you're literally drugging your tree and and making it grow faster with all those synthetic chemicals that you put on it you're drugging the tree this in turn gonna drug you in in a way you're making that thing live hard you're trying to make it pump out babies too fast and it's gonna die fast that's why i let my trees just grow naturally <clears throat> i don't get into all of that i'm gonna show y'all one thing and then we gonna go and i'm gonna take y'all on this tour D did everybody just see did everybody just see me plant uh hold on everybody just saw me plant the tomato right Dang, i can't get that sucker loose i'm about to show y'all something remember when i told you <clears throat> even if you take a five dollar if you buy a, a tomato plant for five dollars you can keep on getting your money back they don't give them to you six in a pack no more but this is the way to do it so watch this I'm going to help you get your money back. If you mess around and pay $5 for this tomato plant, I'm going to help you get your money back. Okay. Number one, I'm going to get some soil. Y'all see that? Okay. I'm going to get some soil in this pot. Just like that. We're going to come back over here. You see, I'm going to take a limb off of here. See this? Let me, let me zoom it in for you. Those are called suckers. And that's what they're actually truly doing. They're sucking the life out of this plant. I am going to take these suckers from the bottom you can get a pair of scissors you can pinch them off with your finger now do y'all see that i'm gonna zoom out let's get another one first this other bottom one serves no purpose you don't want your tomato plants uh literally touching the soil either it, it does help you get a little bit more disease that way it will work, but you will, you will have some insect problems. Okay. Now, these are the two suckers that we just took off right here. See that? I'm going to take this one. Just like that. I'm bringing it in close. So, you see the little hairs on it. Come on, Apple. I'm trying to prove myself. You see the hair fibers on this, on this plant. Is real hairy little nodules. All up there's one you can see real good right here. All the way up this plant, especially there. You see them? I guess you can see them better against my skin. Okay.
Now, this is what we're going to do. This is how I'm going to turn that $5 plant into a $10 plant. We're going to get that soil that we just dug out of here. And I'm going to stick that down in the bottom like that. And I'm going to fill that sucker up all the way to the top. I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to take them limbs off at the bottom. Because they're going to root too. I'm going to fill that up with potting soil. Remember, we're pretending that this is potting soil. I'm going to pack that tight around that plant. Just like that. Just like that. Look at them worms in there. They're in there mating. See that baby worm? See that baby worm? I told you. Take care of your soil and you ain't got to worry about nothing else. I'm going to pack that tightly around that plant. Just like that. Now I'm going to water it. Just like that. Now, do you know what we got? We got a brand new tomato plant. It's that easy. If you don't have any money to be buying no tomato plants, but your neighbor does, and they know about suckers, and they're always trimming their tomato plants like me, ask them for a sucker. It's a whole new plant. I'm going to leave this so y'all, I'm not going to move it. I'm going to leave this right over here in my little tray right here. I'm going to leave that right there and I'm not going to touch it. All I'm going to do is water it so y'all can see what it looks like in a week or two. I'm going to keep track of it so y'all understand how simple this is. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. The other one rather. The other one we put right here. Okay, this is just this is just a clear cup that I got with holes in the bottom. Can y'all see that okay? Stick that down in there like that. Remember, we're pretending that this is potting soil, okay? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not looking at the camera. I had to make sure y'all can see me. I'm going to press that tightly around that plant so that soil can actually touch those fibers so they can turn into roots. Now, watch this. Leave that there for a second. Now I'm going to put it in my dark cup. These are what I call my peekaboo cups because I'm going to put that down in here like this. This has no holes. This just collects the water. Put that down in there like that. So what's going to happen is when I water this, it holds the water in the red cup. And it also keeps the root system in the dark. Like that. So the reason I do this is because everybody is nosy and they want to know if they plant is ready to be transplanted. When you pick it out like this and you see all those roots wrapped around there like our first plant, you know it's time to uh, put this in the ground or put this in your pot. It's ready to go. I'm going to keep track of this as well and show y'all I'm going to give you all the results. And I'm going to put this in my little tray over here too. And we're going to keep track of those two tomatoes. Now, for everybody that grows, um, uh, 
for everybody to grow in a apartment. Do exactly what we did here today. Put your hole in your bucket. The only thing that's going to change for you is you're going to need two five-gallon buckets, okay? The first five-gallon bucket, you put a hole in it. You don't do anything to the second bucket. Nothing. Zero. Zip. Okay? So we everything I showed you how to grow that first tomato plant that we got from the store, buy the plant, get the potting soil, put the hole in the five-gallon bucket, put the potting soil in the five-gallon bucket, put the tomato plant in the soil. Now, here's the trick. And I'm going to show you the actual results. This is how this works. Okay, let's pretend this is your this is your bucket of soil and here's your plant. You done planted your plant, okay? Boom, boom, this is pretend. Now you're ready for it to grow, but you don't have a balcony and you want to grow, try to grow your plants or your food indoors. There's a hole in this bucket. Let's pretend there's no hole at all in this bucket. This one is was left alone. You didn't do anything to it. You put this here and you put this five gallon bucket inside of this five gallon bucket. What you have here is a peekaboo cup, a giant peekaboo cup. This is how we grow things in the winter time. This way you don't have to go and be mopping your floor every time you have to water your plants indoors. This concept is going to do the exact same thing as this. All the water is going to end up in the container with no holes in it. So I can never really overwater it. And if, I, if I'm going on vacation, I'll fill this thing up until this is about to run over so I don't have to keep watering it every day. Boom. This is this concept. This is no more than just a water catcher. That's all that is. The first one is whole so it can, the water can drain out. And this is your water catcher. This whole system, this is a $2 bucket. This is a $2 bucket. That's $4 plus your plant and your soil. And now you eating. It don't get no simpler than that. Okay. Uh, so that's for the people in an apartment with no balcony. Now, here's the thing about that, because I know you're probably going to ask if you haven't already asked, because I wasn't looking at the camera. Yes, you will need a grow light or put it in a window, depending on what you have, depending on what you're growing. Yes, it's that simple. You will have to purchase a grow light. And no, you do not have to go out and pay $400 for these expensive grow lights. Before we before we had grow lights, let, let me be honest with you. The first grow lights that I've ever owned in my life was from a sponsorship. I've never, I have never went in my pocket and spent any of my money to purchase a grow light, an actual grow light. All of my grow lights, all of my life and all of my years, me and my wife can tell you, we get those shop lights from the big box store. I'm going to answer that in a minute, Ladybug, because that's a good question. We get our shop lights from the big box store that's kind of go in your garage, for real. I even got the hooks in my kitchen to show you. And you hang them and you plug them in, you put the right UV bulb in them. You save hundreds of dollars. I can't make that up. And I can show you the hooks inside the house. And I can, I can show you the lights. I got one in my shed and one in my garage right now. When both of them, when I first got this shed, I put one of them in there. And then my lights went out in the garage and I restructured that, put it in the garage. It's dual purpose. So, okay. Now, uh, who was that that asked me that? Because that's a great question. And y'all might want to, Ladybug629 asked me, Led, what mulch are you using? That is is a good question she said lead what mulch are you using excellent question let me show you you know what that is y'all 
Those ain't nothing but pine shavings. Why did I put pine shavings on my potted, my potted plants? I'm going to show you. I can, I can show you better than I can tell you. This is, is, can't make this up. I'm glad you asked that, Ladybug. It's not average mulch. I didn't do this to just be cute or to protect the plant. I actually did this to feed my plant. I'm going to show you why. Do you see that? That's not a wood chip, is it? I mean, it's infused with wood chips. You know what that is? Nope, I, don't, I didn't do it to keep it moist either. That is poop. That is chicken poop. There's some chicken poop. There's some chicken poop. And every bucket is chicken poop. Every bucket. You see it? Every bucket. Oh, that's a good one. That's an excellent question. Okay. We just hatched out 20, 24 chicks. So I have uh, 24 chicks growing in inside the house. Okay. So that's how I keep their bedding clean. I don't throw their bedding out. I used to put it in my chicken coop over here when I was raising chicks in here I will put the bedding out there but now that the chickens aren't here I take that bedding and I put it right in these buckets because the poop chicken poop is some of the best nitrogen fertilizer you can buy organic nitric nitrogen fertilizer that you can buy so you, you don't let your chick poop break down I I clean out the doggone thing and put it in here. All of that, let me let me let me tell you some of the gardening myths that um let me tell you some of the gardening myths too that uh they always tell you you have to let your manure age and compost down right you you hear this a lot a lot of people hear this a lot i have never done that never ever never ever never and want to hear something else i have never ever never ever never ever burned anything from it either i can't speak for everybody but to me in the way i garden it's a garden myth if you take chicken poop fresh hot right out the coop and you put it as a dressing. Uh, I'm going to have you Google that, Stro Boogie. I'm going to have you. You put your wood chips around, your mulch around your tree, and then put your chicken poop on top of the mulch and cover it up. As it rains, it will break down the nitrogen and the nutrients from that hot chicken poop go right down into the ground and filter through the ground down to the roots by the time it get to your roots it has filtered all of the poisons and hot hot toxins off of it i have never ever ever burned a plant in a bucket or in the ground using no chicken poop ever never ever so i always put my chicken poop all around my trees it's i got tons of videos where you see it piled up piled up i would clean out my chicken coop and put it out there fresh okay fresh Um, Karen said, is it because it's mixed with organic material? No, these are just the chicks. I'm talking about when my big chickens was out here and I'm scooping up shovels full of pure chicken poop, no wood chip. No, if 
if you're putting that stuff directly on the root system or up against the bark of the tree or the plant, you're going to burn something. See, I have rabbit poop is good. I heard rabbit poop is good, too. I have it all in my yard. Can I use that? I don't I don't know. I'm be honest with you. I hear that too. I've never used rabbit poop. I can't speak on it. I can only speak on what I what I have done and what I do. I don't want to speak on nothing I have never done because it's a lot of that going on, on on this platform. People don't know what they're talking about, but they're teaching it and they're hurting people. So I I had rabbits for about nine months. I don't know. I've never used rabbit poop on too much. I put it on a couple apple trees, but I can't tell you. It wasn't a long-term result for me. I don't I have no clue. I've never used it like that. Uh, let me see. Oh, and thank you for all the super chats. I'm, I'm just starting to see this. Thank you, everybody. I had no idea. I'm, I have not been looking at the screen when I'm doing this. Um, and that's true. Uh, who just said that? Karen L. said, "Make uh, I see the distinction. Not direct application on the root stem. Makes sense. Chickens walk around in the yard all the time. My chickens walk around in free range all day long. They even, they poop all in my garden. They poop all over the place. And everywhere they poop, everything grows. It, it's just like in a cow pasture. Hey, Lori Lewis, how you doing? Say, um, hey, you know, Lynn says, I've been watching you for a while. Just wanted to show some love. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. Show some love back. Uh, Kimberly Butler. Okay, that's my test on potted plants. Okay, so now that we've talked about that, I'm going to get to this because I've been on here way too long and I, I got about 10 minutes left, okay? But I do want to show you the results of how everything I'm telling you today, and if you go back in my videos, you can go back 15 years and I've been doing this exact same thing. A couple things have changed over the years, but for the most part, this is what I've been doing. I want to show you the results of me leaving Ish alone. Come on with me. Uh, got my sweet potato slips about to get them planted if I can find some slips fine but for the most part these are the same potatoes I keep growing every year over and over even if I just grow a, grow a few of them just enough to give me more slips hey Alisa how you doing good to see you sister so I'm going to take you with me and just show you just a few things Okay. My garden is not beautiful. But for the most part, um, that's fine by me. I've got a lot of cleaning up to do, and I just that's fine. But it produces. Now, um, I'ma just start here since we're here. I'll start here since we're here. Okay. Now, this is my Bartlett pear tree. This pear tree, let me, let me zoom out. This pear tree, I have grafted about three or four different pears on it. And this year, I cut this tree back really, really hard last year. So that's why it's not really performing this year. I cut it hard because it had a little, um, oh, I can't even think of the word right now. But here's one growing. That's one little pear growing. Oh, that's two. But I cut this thing hard. Now here's, that was the Bartlett pear part growing. Uh, I had some. Here's some. This is the moon glow pear that I grafted onto this tree. And it seems to be doing good. And there's more Bartlett pears up here. Okay. 
Now here's that Orient pear. This is the pear tree of the world right here. This pear tree performs every year without a doubt, no matter what I do, I have, remember, y'all remember, last year, I chopped half of this tree off and took the air layers off, remember? This is that tree. This is why I did it. And those air layer trees even got fruit on them. Because this, every year, this tree performs like crazy. Pears everywhere. I ain't even showed y'all nothing. Pears. Everywhere. Now, this, this is me. I have not fertilized that tree. I have not fertilized those trees at all. I just don't do it. I it don't need it, man. Is is geese here all the time? Pooping in the ground. Is deer all the time? Pooping on the ground. Everything you can think of that lives here, pooping on the ground. I live on the lake. It's always turtles up here, laying eggs, pooping on the ground. Everything. Oh, let me see. Whole servants is up, man. True. What what's going on? Black footies. Said I was told. Oh, okay, Black Footy says, I was told at Lowe's, the trees only grow in ground, that trees only grow good in ground. Oh, absolutely not. That, no, that's not true. Uh, you was right about that humble servant. No, um, I don't own a property and can't. No, no, citrus love containers. Citrus love containers. Let me, let's go back up here. This is just for you, Footies. This one is just for you. Absolutely not. Look, this is how much they love containers. I got this one, dug it out the ground, and it's still growing just fine and fruiting. This is my Miwa, my sweet Miwa kumquat. It's growing in a cement mixing tub. No, put it in a container. It'll live forever. The containers that you buy it in, this been in here for over a year. I had to cut it back, but it's still alive. Put it in a five gallon bucket. It'll be fine. No, don't worry about that. Don't, don't listen to them. Listen, people at Lowe's, are not specialists they are not nurseries they sell plants and washers and dryers okay you if you want real advice from real people that's been to school and are educated or fully knowledgeable on the situation go to a nursery because that's all they do you won't you don't go to a nursery and buy a washer dryer a tow hitch a plank of wood and some tomato plants. Them, them people they put back there are normal everyday people. They're not knowledgeable. Um, this, here you go. I used to work at a Home Depot years ago. I was the manager. And you know what my job was? I need somebody out there in the garden center. It's called a garden center. So when I need somebody in the garden center, because Ralph didn't show up for work, hey, hey. Do me a favor, go out to the garden center for four hours. When you're done out there, I'm going to have somebody come switch you out. Amy might be a cashier. Amy might be working in the paint uh, section. Amy might be back there in um, uh, um, tools. It don't matter what, it don't matter what department inside of a, a big box store. Go out there and man that register. They're not 
that's why when you go up to say, ma'am, do these grow good and light? And the cashier will be like, I don't know. They really don't know and they are not supposed to know. They are supposed to ring you up and get you out of that store. That's all. You go to a nursery, when you go to an actual nursery and they don't know, then get scared. Okay? So I'm going to show you a little bit more. I don't fertilize. I don't fertilize like that. My trees grow slow because I don't shove a bunch of crap on them. Here's my, I think this is my chocolate persimmon. I told you I've been having these forever. Coffee cake persimmon. It's my coffee cake persimmon full of fruit. Now this, this only been here since 2019, the tag say. Can y'all see the fruit on that? These little guys right here, fruit. Here's a chocolate persimmon full of little baby fruit. See them? Those are the little fruit flowers right there. I could do this all day. Pecan trees. This is that little pecan tree. Here's a pecan. Here's a, a, a desirable pecan tree loaded with blooms. This thing busts nuts every year. Should have been different. <laughs> Here's my tamapan persimmon. I don't fertilize these like everybody. All that stuff that people be buying, I don't do it. Here's another, I think this is another coffee cake persimmon full of fruit. Everybody knows Rasputia, the giant gyro persimmon. This is Rasputia. I don't fertilize her. She just sits here. I have never, I have never. This is the one where I get five gallons of, five, five gallon buckets of um, persimmons every year. Now, Rasputia, she took over while my favorite tree, Bonita, was down and out. Bonita is back. This is going out to all of my OG gardeners that been hanging out with me for years to everybody whoever knows Bonita. Bonita is my favorite Fuyu persimmon tree. She was the first one I ever had and she means a lot to me and she got caught up in like a tornado or something and it broke her down to the knuckle and here she is. Introducing back to the stage, Bonita, the beast. This is Bonita. This tree, I got, I'm proud of her. She's full of fruit. I know I'm buffering. I'm, I'm, my thing is going back and forth. It's trying, trying to catch up. She's full of fruit. And she's healthy. She don't need no crutch no more, no splint, no nothing. She's standing up on her own and everything. Bonita is back. This is going out to all my gardeners that been with me for years, years that knew all about what she meant to me. She is back. Everybody said, welcome back, Bonita. Full of fruit, too. Had a nerve come back with some babies. That was, that was one of my first skits that I ever did was about Bonita. <laughs> Bonita, the beast. Now, I'm going to take y'all. We're going to get a little closer. Uh, cause I don't have my expanders all. I didn't even show y'all all the bananas that's coming back. The bananas is coming back out there. My plantains and my, uh, blue java, pecans, figs. I want to show y'all. This is for the person that asked me about the loquats earlier. Oh, the deer been eating my figs. See, at first I didn't care about the deer because I, I was uh, going to sell this house. But now that I'm not selling it, 
I'm gonna have to de deal with the deer. Oh, oh, how can I forget? How can I forget? How can I forget this? The mulberry tree. More fruit than you could ever eat. More fruit than you will ever eat. You can't eat that much fruit without getting sick. I'm going to tell you about this tree. This tree is special. I took this cutting from my hometown in Toledo, Ohio. This is native to Toledo, Ohio. I took this from my sister-in-law house, Lady Led's sister. And I took it and I stuck that little, that little stick right there. I didn't water it. I didn't look at it. I probably ran it over with the lawnmower. I don't know. And it turned into this behemoth. All of the cuttings that I sold to everybody, this how easy it was to grow that doggone um, mulberry tree. You ain't going to believe this. You ain't going to believe this, so I'm going to show you. The tree was actually in this. You see them cut down there at the bottom? The beaver ate all of those around here that made the tree even bigger. That was the original parts of the tree. The beaver ate them down to a stump. And then these 10 monsters grew off of the back of them little baby ones and turned into these. So that's why it's wire around the body of this tree so the beavers don't finish eating them because they love them as much as we do. So, had to show you that. Now, let's get going because I want to show y'all two of my favorite trees. Did nobody, no, not too many people be talking about this. You're slipping, you're slipping. If you don't get yourself a jujube, they go fast every year. They sell out everywhere. They go fast every year. Jujubes, if you can't grow um, date palms in your area, like a date that's so delicious, that tastes like caramel, buy a jujube. Buy a jujube tree. And you see, it's loaded with little fruit. Little fruit buds. You can't, oh, see them? Every year I get tons of these things, tons of them. And I let the deer eat them while I was out at, uh, on my land, tons of them. This is one where I got two trees planted in one hole. This is the Lee Jujube and this is the Lang Jujube. I got two trees literally planted in one hole. Now, we got, we got two more things to talk about. This is my loquat, and it's full of fruit this year. This is the loquat. This is the, um, the gold nugget, the gold nugget loquat. You can see the fruit, they turning gold too. All out the tree. They even made it through the frost. I couldn't believe it. I thought every year the frost kills all the fruit off, but this year it made it. Okay, that's the gold nugget, and this monster is the champagne. This one is a beast. This one. I call Diana. Me and a friend, oh, it do got a little fruit left on. Sorry about that. But it's still budding. Still got a little fruit. Still budding out. Right there. Couple of little places is still trying to fruit. It's trying. 
It's trying. Right here. Okay, I ain't gonna count it out. But I call this tree, this is the Champagne Loquat here. I call this one Diana because me and a friend of mine, her name is Diana. Her channel here is Garden Love. Go over to Garden Love channel and tell her Leah Farmer 73 sent you. And she'll show you way back in the day. Oh God, that been about eight years ago. Me and her bought these trees together. She bought one and I bought one. And I named that tree after her. Cause that's that's my that's my my friend right there. So now, so now let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I wanna I wanna tell you about one of my one of my greatest achievements. One of my greatest achievements was this apple tree. This apple tree means a lot to me. It's in full, full bloom. I'm gonna show you. It has been pollinated and you can see the apples. All throughout the tree. All throughout the tree you can see it has been pollinated and there are tons of flowers and pollinated flowers that turning into small little apples. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why this tree means so much to me. This, if you're not familiar with the story and if you are, you understand. This tree is the tree I taught my son how to graft on. This is about eight different apple, apple trees grafted to one rootstock. The rootstock itself was the Wolf River. And I need to clean that up from around there. This was the root, the, the Wolf River apple. And I happened to chop it off and I got videos of it. I'm gonna put it on after this, okay? The Wolf River apple, chopped it off, and I'm gonna show you all of the graphs that me and my son did together. I showed him, and this is the results of my son. My son done this, not me. I'm gonna show you the video. I showed my son how to do this on a video. And now it's, it's a yellow delicious apple, a red delicious apple, a Wolf River, a Pink Lady. Um, oh, it's been so many, I can't remember all of them no more. Arkansas's Black, Granny Smith, you name it, that's what this tree is. Okay? So, uh, let me show you this. I'm going to show you where all the, the graph marks are. Because they still exist to this day. This, and you're going to see on the video when I, when I post it, okay? This is where I gave my son a piece of graph wood. We cut the tree limb right here. Let me zoom in on that so you can really see. And you can also see how a tree scabs over after it heals. We cut the branch here, flush, and we grafted that piece of wood, this piece of wood stock, right down in the pocket down here. You can still see the black. That black is from electrical tape. Everybody always using all of those strange tapes. I don't. Like, uh, what is the wax paper or parafilm, whatever it is. I don't use that. I use electrical tape. I don't use a funny tool. I use a daggone knife. We grafted that sucker right down in that pocket, taped it up, put a sandwich bag over the top to hold in the moisture, and put a brown paper bag over top of it. And now, this is what we have. 
Now, I want you to follow, follow that branch. Follow this branch. Full of blooms and fruit. That's one branch. I don't know which tree it is. Now, we did this multiple times. Here's another one that you can't you can't even see where it healed at no more. <laughs> you don't know. You can see the I'm going to show you this how 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 dope that is. You can't even tell. That's two graphs. That is two graphs. One on this side, here's where we cut it. Here's where we cut it. And we jammed one in this side and another one in this side. And this crotch is two trees. And this is what they have turned into. So we planted, I mean, we grafted two different kind of trees on one limb. So we did the entire tree like this. You can see all of the results and all of the remnants from us doing this all the way around. This branch is not a graft. This is just growing off of a graft. So this is a whole tree, a limb by itself growing off of a piece that we grafted. Here's another graft here. This is two different grafts. Here's one. This is the remnants. You can see where we cut it. Look how it healed over. You can barely see it anymore. So, just to show you how big this apple tree has gotten in such a short amount of time, and all of the blooms are, are budding and blooming and fruiting right now. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing before we go. If your tree, I'm proud of that tree, but if your fruit tree happens to get hurt or damaged or destroyed, do not throw your tree away. And I'm going to show you why. If your tree got damaged or hurt, over the graph line, your tree can still grow back. Bonita is one of them. Bonita got tore off this far away from the graph line. I let this much grow, and now she's that. Here is my Anna apple tree. The Anna apple tree, a beaver ate this. This tree used to be up to my rooftop. It literally was right there, up on the garage. Go back in my videos, you'll see it. And when the chicken coop was still here. You know what happened? Beaver ate it. I'm going to show you. This is why people be like, Lay, don't be, he don't be gardening. He don't know cheese there because the beavers eat him. I live on a lake. This is where the beaver ate. See that? Let me, let me zoom in so I can show you good. This is where the beaver bit this tree off and, and took it away with his damn mouth. The beaver bit this whole gigantic tree off and just dragged it away with his mouth and didn't leave a leaf. I let these two grow off of the side. Here's the, oh, y'all can't see that. Wait. Here's the graph line right here. These two trees, hold on. These two trees grew above the graph line. So I know I still got an Anna apple, right? So what does that do? It gives you apples. Let it grow. I got tons of them at the top too. Let me show you that. Not tons, I guess. 
couple of them must have fell down. But still, to see fruit after that, now, I got two different trees growing out of this. I don't want that out of an apple tree. I want a standard structure. I want this to be my main scaffold. So I'm going to um, air layer with the chili dog method this whole tree off. This whole other side. Just in case you can't see both of these trees. There's two separate trees here. One here, one here. I'm going to air layer this entire tree over here off to give this one more energy. Then I'm going to take this tree and I'm going to take it somewhere else so and let it grow. That's a whole nother tree, just like we did the pears. So my point for showing you all of this is not to brag at all. Oh, 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 almost forgot something. We can't leave yet. We can't leave yet. We can't leave yet. While we talking about grafting, we can't leave yet. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. Citrus is my shit. Okay, this is the Owari Satsuma. Owari Satsuma. I think it's O-W-A-R-I, I believe. Owari Satsuma. Citrus is my shit. Go check out my citrus playlist and tell me I'm playing games with you. I took this tree What is you doing out here? Trying to steal the spotlight? Ain't you supposed to be out taking a dump or something? Come on. Go Come take on. a dump. I ain't gonna show you, babe. Okay, she's trying to come out steal the spotlight. Citrus. Two years ago, y'all saw me, and I'll show you the video. Cut this down. I'm gonna show you how low. Knee high to me. I'm gonna show you. I can't. I can't make this up. Okay, y'all see? Y'all see that that graft? Watch this. Knee high. This was about two years ago. I grafted two pieces on here. I grafted a, uh, I can't remember what kind of citrus that failed on this side. And then I grafted another kind of citrus here on this side. Can y'all see that? Oh yeah, here on this side, this one grew. That's another kind of satsuma. Here's another one I did over here. Let me try to scoot that over. You can still see the tape on that one where it grew. And I took that off and regrafted it onto something else where you see the tape at. So that's something else. This is something else. And this is the Owari Satsuma side. All right, come on. Come on. This was down that low. And it did this. This used to be my weakest tree. It used to be my weakest, wackest tree, and that's why I experimented on it. When I cut it down to knee level and start putting grafts on it, the reason I was grafting on it, because it was looking like it was going to die. It was acting all funky. And this would happen. Now, it's my strongest of my satsumas. It's, this used to be my strongest. That was, now it's like weak. The frost, the frost almost destroyed this one i had to cut this right here because the, the frost killed everything above this this used to be my biggest this is the brown select you can y'all see that okay i had to cut it right there 
this is my most this is one of my most freeze free frost free cold hardy oranges satsuma oranges but remember what was that last year year before yeah last year that was was 80 degrees that day and it was 28 degrees that night and it did that for a week and it killed it killed that off i cut it off and before i could dig it up it started growing back above the graft line remember as long as your tree as long as your tree is growing above the graft line here's the graft line right here you can see where it kind of changes in diameter right here see that let me show you better so i can see that you see it there you go you see that There's a reason why I'm showing you all of this. It's not to brag at all, cause most people up uh, pomegranate is busting at all, cause most people up uh, pomegranate is busting. Here go the pomegranates. Pomegranate. Okay, they starting up too. Pomegranate is coming out. So. Here's, here's what I want to say. I'm not doing this to brag at all. I'm doing that quick tour to show you. You do not need to do, you, it is not necessary in most situations to do all of that nonsense. It's not necessary. To just be put, just going out, listen, you will go out, you will spend $5 on a tomato plant and spend $50 on fertilizer trying to keep it alive. That's insane to me. That's when you're, you're buying chemicals, you buy $30 to $50 worth of chemicals to try to keep a $5 tomato alive. And everybody is, is missing the point. If you, if you buy a tomato plant, and you ain't even really sure where it came from, then you turn around and put $30 worth of chemicals, agents, fertilizers in the ground to grow the tomato plant because you saying you wanna know where your food comes from, I can tell you that for you. It came from chemicals. The reason why you don't want to go to the store is because you want to save money. And you also want to know that you're growing real food. Why would you <clears throat> pay more money to grow your own plant and vegetables and do the same thing that the industries are trying to do? It doesn't make any sense. See, this is why I kind of reeled back in the gardening videos i reeled back a little in the prepping videos i reeled back in the two-way i reeled back in the land purchasing i reeled back in the survival you know why because everything has turned weird i don't understand any of it now i do my stuff for real i do this for for real for real I do this for my family for real. I don't do this for YouTube videos. I got other streams of income. But I see it all the time. Um, I'm not knocking nobody. Get your money how you get it. But that's not what I'm here for. I want to show you, the reason I showed you all of this is because I don't use all of those crazy fertilizers. You know why I haven't had bananas in... I haven't grown bananas, like literally get a batch of bananas in probably five years. Because bananas in my climate where I am take so much fertilizer, so much water. If you want bananas, you got to feed them suckers. You want bananas? You got to water them suckers. Or you ain't getting no bananas. You just going to have a big, beautiful palm tree. That's it. 
So that's why I stopped caring about that. I'm not spending no money and I don't make enough compost and fertilizer natural to just feed just bananas then get two hands of racks of bananas. That's just dumb to me. I just, that's why I stopped doing it. I have my plantains and my blue java and really, they really just for show. I don't put any energy into trying to get no bananas out of them. You put all that food, all that water, all that energy just to get out one hand of bananas, two hands of bananas. But you spent $100 to feed it all year. I, it just stopped making sense to me. Okay. So I reel back in the gardening videos because it was getting weird. It's like I see folks spending $30, $40 on trying to keep a tomato alive and they using chemicals. And I, it's just me. But my goal was I, I want to save money and I, I'm already putting toxins in my body just walking around. I don't want to, this says it's skull and crossbones on the back of this fertilizer. Oh, it's going to make your plant grow. So any to each his own. I just, I just don't do it. Okay. So before I get out of here, and I'm sorry for taking y'all so long, but I really wanted to show you why I do what I do and why I don't do what I don't do. Okay. I hope I wasn't buffering around the apple tree because that was one of my favorites. So I'm going to try that uh, journey home. Say so I'm going to try that tomato. Thanks. And you know what? Just for giggles. Uh, Trish said, yep, I learned the hard way with bananas. You, it's, it's just too much. If you live in that kind of climate and you live where it can eat like that, they could feed like that, then great, but I don't. Uh, you can feed the plant in the short term or feed the soil. Yeah, yeah, but still, them bananas, you don't, you have no idea how much nutrients bananas need. They need a lot of nutrients. A lot. Let me see. Okay. Let me see. So if I ain't got no more questions, I'm going to show you all this real quick before I go. Before I go. Before I go, we're going to do one more for giggles, just for giggles. I'm going to do it fast just to show you how easy this is, just for giggles. That's a tomato plant that I already got. This is just for giggles. Okay. I'm going to get two cups. This is just for giggles. Stick with me. Let me get some soil. Boom. I'm gonna pinch two off of this patio peach. I don't got no knife, I'm just gonna pinch them off. Let me see if y'all can see that. Okay, okay. Just took them off just like that. Here's a sucker. You can see the hair on it real good now. We're going to do this real quick. See all the hairy fibers? Watch this. Take our cup. Clear cup. Jam that whole tomato down in that sucker. Just like that. Fill it up. Pack it in. Peekaboo cup. Water it down. 
brand new plant. That's a patio tomato right there. That $5 that I paid for that tomato plant, now look, I'm starting to get my money back. And I can do this to a point where I can even start selling them and getting all my money back and making a profit. This is how this works. I'm going to put that here. We're going to do the same thing with this one. Down in the dirt. Fill that sucker up to the, to the rim. I'm not even removing the stems. That's how hood I am. I'm not even removing the stems on y'all. Boom. Look. And that one is starting to fruit. That's about to flower right there. Put it in a red cup. Remember, this got holes in it. The clear one got holes. This one don't. Pack it down. Water it down. Now, our $5 plant, we just divided a $5 plant into three. You can do the math on that. So what is that, about $1.75, somewhere around there, $1.80? Okay, we starting to get our money back. We starting to get our money back. Now, I could do this all day because I'm looking at tons of the tomato plant that I can keep separating over and over and over again. This is the patio tomato. That they charged me five dollars for. So now I just divided that five dollars into three. This is how we do it. Get your money back from these people. Get your money back. And I see a big old hunk of chunker that I kind of want to bust up right now. I'm gonna do it. That's, that's a big old hunk of chunker right there. Let me show you which one I'm talking about. I can't leave without him. I'm not leaving without you, buddy. That big hunk of chunker. Let me see if y'all can see this. This big mom right here. I don't want, I don't want my tomato plants out of control. That big hunk of chunker, that's a whole plant. This is bigger than what you would buy in the store. This is bigger than what you would buy at the store. Okay, so I just turned my tomato plant, my $5 tomato plant, into four plants. I'm really getting my money back now. So it's now like $1.25 per plant. This one is budding and about to go to bloom. So we're going to do the exact same thing one more time. I'm about to make my $5 back, y'all. That's what we're here for. Now, here's the funny part. I can take this off and make another plant let's do it it don't matter if you tear it it's gonna be fine stick that sucker down in the dirt fill him up again pack it in make sure that soil is touching around that stem so it can root put it in the red cup Water it down. We about to make this $1 plant, y'all. $1 plant. We making our plant make us money. So now we talking about about $1.25 a piece. Now I'm going to take this last piece and plant it. So we'll be, we'll be talking about a dollar per plant. Dollar per plant. Take that little we weasel right there. Fill it up. Pack it down. Red cup. Water. Boom. Just that quick, we got four plants off of a $5 tree. So now the $5 plant that we bought is literally $1. Did you see that? How I turned a $5 plant into a $1 plant. And I can do this all day. But now here's the sweet part. It's growing on a single stem. And I can control it up this trellis. I can control how many tomatoes it's going to put out. And I can control it from getting bushy and crazy. Because I'm already pruning off those pieces 
turning them into more plants. Now, let's be honest. If I took one more cutting off of that one tomato, I just got that for free then, didn't I? So I made them pay me my money back. Let's do that. I'm going to make them suckers pay me. I'm about to make them suckers pay me. A little bit of dirt to cut. Take that last piece off of there. Come on off of there. I'm going to take that last damn piece off of there. I'm going to make them pay me. They owe me. Stick that down in there. Much money as I give to society and I do my part, pay my taxes. Give me my free, give me my free plant. Fill that up. Pack it down. Boom. I just got my money. I just got a free plant now. That, that plant ain't cost me nothing. Cup it up. See, they can't, they can't mess with us hood folks, man. We know how to survive. We know how to get money. We know how to get money while they taking our money. It don't get no hoodier than that. Boom. That last plant, that last plant was made this plant free. See how I did that? There it is. Now I turned the $5 plant into a free plant. I'm going to come over here in the shade. That sun, that sun starting to crackle like around the, around the bend. So I just wanted to show you all that real quick to show you. Look. This is stuff that ain't nobody, well, I ain't going to say nobody's saying. I'm just saying we need to talk about more. Get your money. If you go get a start, don't, you don't have, this is, okay, I'm going to say this. When you go to the store and you, you're you going to buy a start, most people, most people purchase at least $50 worth of starts because you want to start your garden. You want your garden to start right now. So you buy about 10 tomato plants, 10 pepper plants, 10 squash plants, 10 cucumber, yada, yada, yada. You will leave out of there and you done spent over $100 trying to get your garden started for the year, right? Man, buy one tomato plant. One. And this is what you do. I'm growing the Mortgage Lifter Tomato and the Mr. Stripey. Say you're growing the, the Rutgers and the Paul Roberson. I say, hey, my friend, look here. I say, hey, Big Rooster. I saw you there. Big Rooster, man, I got four. I, I just pulled off five of these um Mortgage Lifter Tomatoes, man. I'll trade you one of those for one of your Paul Robersons. And uh, unbiased LLC, I got over here, I got a sweet one million tomato. I'll trade you one of those for your um, Cherokee purple. We don't got to keep on spending $1,000 at the nursery to get our garden started. If you're going to buy starch, we're only talking about starch, not seed. Why is we doing this? Every year. I'm going to tell you how much these companies care about this. How many people have been to a big box store and saw that once the season is kind of rolling out, they don't care about watering them. They don't care if all the tomatoes and the peppers and all the vegetables die. And then they call that little truck from that company to come pick this up. And I've watched them, them companies come pick them trucks up. And, and throw that stuff back in the truck because it's going to the dump. It's going to get composted. Right? They don't even care. That's how much they know they're getting off of you. Because, like, man, we made our money on the, on the opening day of spring. We made all our money back. We don't care. Another thing.
If they buy some old dried out dead ass tomatoes, they won't even mark them down no more. Come on now when I'm telling you the truth. They don't even mark them down no more. It's rare you can find some vegetables on clearance. Now that little company that brings them every year, come and get them back and throws them in the back of the truck. They don't even mark them down. You will go up to the cashier. Hey, can I get like 50% off of this? It look, it's almost dead. It's only one green leaf on it. The people at the at the big box stores say, yeah, we ain't in control of that no more. Um, you know, when they come on Monday, you can ask them when they loading it up. Ask who? We don't put those out. That company on the side of that container. That's who comes and puts them out here for their vendors. They have nothing to do with this company. They are vendors. Just like the dude to come put snicker bars and Reese pieces in the vending machine in your job. He has nothing to do with you building cars. He's just in here to put snicker bars in this snack machine. That's what this plant, these plant people do. They have nothing to do with the orange big box store or the blue big box store. They are coming to put their product in this store. And that's, they don't care. The big box store don't care about the product and the product people. Sorry about that. The product people don't care about the store and the store people don't care about the product people. And that's just how this works. Okay. So why would you go if they don't care? Why would you go spend two hundred dollars on something that they don't even care about? Now, I'm not doing that no more. I'm not saying I haven't done it in the past because I have. Especially in an emergency. But. Things are getting tight. And it's time for us to kind of start to reel back and start to see where our money is going. Stuff ain't flowing like it used to back in the day. It's time to start counting your nickels a little bit. You understand? I ain't going to keep you all too much longer because I know she keep on calling me here. Everybody, live Farmer 73 because I got to make this run. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you. Let me say that. I hope this helped you. Live Farmer 73, I love you and I'm out. It's that easy. Everybody have a wonderful day. All right. Peace.